welcome back all my glow babies this is your girl dance down i'm here with another video for you guys today and today my video is how to identify if you're double-minded or to identify if you're dealing with someone who is double-minded now it's very important guys that you pay attention to this video so that you can know when you're dealing with someone who is not sure of who they are okay so first I need you guys to go ahead and like, subscribe, share, and comment on this video so that we can get that I'll go up, okay? So first let's define what double-minded is. So to be double-minded is being deceitful, okay? So that your words are not really aligning with your actions. And it's so important for us to kind of identify what a double-minded person is so that we can know how to deal with them and how to place them in the season. So our scripture for today that we're using for reference will be james 1 and 8 and the scripture reads a double-minded man is un is unstable in all his ways and receives nothing from the lord sorry y'all i had to pause because that was really really deep that was a that was a deep scripture because we have to pick a side, guys. We can't be sometimes here, sometimes there. We have to choose which servant, which master we're going to serve. And the Bible also tells us that we cannot serve two masters. Either we will love one and hate the other. That's how it is. So speaking from two th tongues just simply means that we're not sure who we are. We're not sure our purpose. <clears throat> we haven't really built a relationship with our creator. So we're just going with the flow of life. And that's the most dangerous thing to do, guys, is to try and go with the flow of life and not know what you want out of life and not know where you're going. Because then if you're not sure what you want and where you're going, you're going to end up with the tides. You're going to end up with the tides and the flows of life, and that's extreme. <clears throat> so I kind of made this video because at one point in my life, guys, I was double-minded for a long time. Um, you know, I would call God's name, but I was not in love with God. And how do we measure being in love with God? We're going to measure being in love with God with, the scripture that is John 14 and 21. The scripture reads, Those that love me are those that keep my commandments. And those that keep my commandments love my Father. And those that love my Father, will I will manifest myself to them. And guys, it took me a while to kind of hide myself in the word of God because... um. I was under serious demonic oppression of fornication, uh, pornography, perversion, poverty. I was under serious demonic oppression. And I was speaking from two tongues. And I've realized, guys, whenever we're at a certain place in our lives, that we will entertain people who are at the same level. For example, if I am hurting and I'm not healed, I'm going to entertain someone who is hurting and who is not healed as well because it's a comfort zone. But as soon as you get out of that area of no longer being healed, no longer being hurt, and you're starting to heal, and you actually healed, you're not gonna, you're no longer gonna leave, deal with a hurt person. So I still have to say this, guys. Um, I'm gonna give you some scenarios and some tips to kind of identify if you're dealing with a double-minded person, if you're double-minded yourself. So I just gave you guys a scripture where it talked about. You know, how do we measure if we love God? This is the word of God, guys. So this is how God identifies if you love him. is simply you following his commandments. If you don't follow his commandments, if you don't follow the commandments of God, you don't love him. Let me say that again. If you don't follow the commandments of God, you don't love him. And it's harsh, guys, but I got to call a thing a thing because I was once in that position where I did not love God. 
I was I was double minded. I spoke from two tongues because I was deep in fornication and I would call up God's name. And in the Bible, y'all, it tells us that if we regard iniquity in our heart, when we pray, God don't hear us. So it took me some time to kind of just reflect on what I was doing and realizing that I had to make a change and I had to make the, st the first step to seek God for myself and kind of really spend time with him so I could really get to know him. And when I started to spend time with him, guys, um, everything changed for the better because then he started to reveal himself to me and I started to manifest my heart desires without even having to ask or praying just because I was kind of living a righteous life where I was not in iniquity. I would repent and I would really put the word of God first. So the first big tip that I can give anyone who is trying to identify if you're dealing with someone who's double-minded, first, their actions are not allowing their words. For example, ladies, if you're dealing with a man who is married, legally married, don't care if he's separated from his wife. First of all, if he's separated from his wife, you have to ask within yourself, why is he not divorced? This is the free game here, ladies. I love you. I really want to help you. I want to set you free from bondage. And I want you to be catapulted into your God-ordained destiny. Why is he not married? He's going to give you the runaround. But long story short, regardless of the reason why he is still legally married is not your business. You're dealing with a man who needs to be left alone because he needs to heal and you do not want to be a band-aid you do not want to be a cover-up for a man you understand so it's very important for you to identify that if the man is unavailable emotionally legally unavailable but he's still trying to talk to you that's a double-minded man that's a man speaking from two tongues okay so this is where you guys need to come into play and guard your heart in this aspect. The first thing you need to do when you acquaint yourself with a man is you need to ask him, Hey, what's your legal status? Find that out first. Sometimes they're going to lie, but most times, guys, they're going to keep it real. So you find out for yourself so that you can save yourself the headache and the heartbreak. Because most time, ladies, this is a free game here. The men who are still legally married are using you for sex because they're waiting. They may not be at peace with this, but they're waiting for their wife to come back. And they may lie to themselves that they're over it and they're not going to come back to their wife and Ray Tay Tay. Listen, there's a reason why they're having divorced, okay, to get over that. So that's the biggest, the biggest way for you to identify if someone's speaking from two tongues. Two. The same mouth that they're cursing from that they're trying to give praises to the most high so on one hand they want to try to control situations they want to try to tell you what to do to play god because that's in turn what it is when people are trying to be controlling is that they try to play god okay without them really actually reading the word of god and trying to figure out what it is that they need to be doing in the season, especially when it comes to their children. The Bible tells us that a person gifts makes way for them and room for them and will put them before great men. So another example to identify if you're dealing with maybe a parent who is double-minded is a parent that is pushing the thought of you to get a degree or something that is man-obtained to get around in life y'all this is a clear indication that this person does not have a relationship with the most high this person does not read their bible this person lacks faith so it's very important guys for you to spend time with god so that he can show you your gifts or just self-examining yourself and see what things that you do that kind of um you notice that comes naturally to you when people are just so amazed at it. Y'all, that's a gift. Like for me, example, I've always loved singing. 
from I can remember, I was just singing. I would sing all the time. Singing is one of my first passions. It is my first passion, actually. But before I had the initiative to cook, I wanted to sing. So for a long time, I was double-minded in my ways because I was under the influence of a mother who was, you know, old fashioned, born up in the Caribbean, want you to get a degree. Low key, she wanted to just have a child that she can brag on. But there came a time, guys, when I put my hand and I applied all my potential to try and apply myself to college and it just wasn't working out. And that's when I had to kind of seek the father and God told me, what does my word say? My heaven and earth will pass away, but my word cannot return to you, to me void. My word says that your gifts will make a way for you. Not a degree, not a trade certificate, your gifts. So at this point when I realized that I was doing something that I was not purpose, it was potential but not purpose, I went ahead and I just made up my mind like yo I'm not gonna keep doing this when this is not what I was ordained to do so that's when I put my full foot into singing I invested thousands of dollars you know videos music beats all that stuff and I just continue to let the Holy Spirit guide me and to give me ideas so that I can compose songs and that I can go ahead and let his word come to pass in my in my life so those are like the three main ways, guys, to kind of identify if someone is speaking from a double mind. Um, the one more I have for you guys would be if, you know, a friend compliments you, but in the same breath they're complimenting you, they try to make you look bad in front of someone else. For example, for me, guys, it was... Uh, you know, I started to lose weight and I, you know, a few friends, I would let them know that I started with a personal trainer and I think that they never thought that I would make it to where I, I made it to. So, you know, they were fine until they saw the results. And it was like, when they saw the results, there was a period in my life where I was very like proud of myself. So I would wear bathing suits, I would wear laundry photos, I would take pictures and I would post them online. Now, one of my friends at the time guys how i know that they were speaking from a double mind they were speaking from two tongues was the same individual would comment on a photo and be like oh gorgeous but when i spoke to a mutual friend like maybe a year later about you know me posting the photos online i would hear something else like they would tell me, oh, this person, you know, they stopped talking to you because you would post this kind of photos. And it just wouldn't make sense to me because it's like, all right, she says that she is groomed and grown a certain way, that she is used to, you know, dressing modest. But so when I post lingerie and bikini photos, you're rubbed the wrong way. That's not making no sense, y'all. It's not. The person was just jealous because they were out of shape and they were obese. And my good body, my good, good, good body kind of rubbed them the wrong way. So in that instance, you know, I already kind of delete the person number. But in the instance, when I heard that from the horse's mouth, guess what, guys? I blocked them on everything. Because if you that double-minded where you could even lie, you don't want to be up front to let so-and-so know that you just dealing with a spirit of insecurity. And my good body is rubbing you wrong. Yeah, I don't don't even call me. So that was really um one of the keynotes that I kind of dealt with. Friends I was speaking from a double, from two tongues. Uh bad compliments, guys. Um, backhanded compliments. So I had another friend who I told the same thing, like, oh yeah, I'm giving myself four months because uh da, da, photo shoot, da da da. She didn't expect me to lose the weight. And when I lost the weight, everything was, oh, you look so good. You're so skinny. Every time she sees me, she's bringing my weight up. And I'm like, okay, this is awkward because I'm not bringing my weight up. Why are you bringing my weight up? You mad? You salty? So one second she would say, oh, you look good. Da, 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 da. And the other second she'd be like, 
you look so good. You look so skinny. Then she would start to talk about my breasts. She was like, oh, but you're poor breasts. You don't have no breasts. I'm like, oh, yeah. I got to block this one. So, y'all, kind of identifying when people are speaking in double tongues is very, very painful. But it's going to work out for you in the long run. So, guys, I'm going to give you some tips to kind of deal when you identify people in your close circle are talking from double tongues, what to do. So personally for me, guys, when I started to experience a lot of envy, a lot of strife from the people that I kind of, you know, held in my circle. When I started to delight myself in the word of God, I started to kind of pray for him to send me people who were on the same mindset of me who wanted to seek him in the same way and lo behold y'all he sent me my sister in christ she's not just a sister in christ she's a sister in regular that's my ride or die malika more i love you so much baby girl and i thank you so much for standing in the gap for me and i just i'm so excited for the manifestations of the promises of god to manifest in my life in your life but he sent me her and we literally were thirsty. We were thirsty and we were hungry to seek God, y'all. And we just consecrated ourselves and things just started to work out for us. So that's another one. One thing, guys, is delighting yourself in God, delighting yourself in his word. And he will start to manifest the, the desires of your heart. Two is before i really kind of got the hateration from the people who were speaking in double-minded um i did kind of invest in a personal trainer where i speak about this in my other videos you know invested in a personal trainer started to work out i kind of channeled my energy into something that i can see a positive return so i encourage you guys to do the same thing invest in a personal trainer if you can't afford one right now just go ahead and get a gym membership and just make exercise your priority it's an awesome way to invest your energy it's also an awesome way for you to deal with your stress i started to kind of i also identify the ungodly soul ties that i had and I started to use the uh, scripture to kind of help break that, okay? But, um, when I started to kind of separate myself from those that spoke from double tongues, guys, everything started to work out for me. Everything that was stolen from me started to be restored because the Bible tells us that I will restore the years that the locusts eaten. Y'all, a peace was my portion. Joy was my portion. Um, I just started to be happy with myself. So I'm just here for you guys today to just seek the Lord in spirit and in truth. And identify if people in your life are speaking from two tongues. Regardless if it's a personal relationship, it's a friendship. A family member when you identify that this person is speaking from two tongues that's a clear indication that they are of a wickedness I'm sorry separate yourself from that person and seek the Lord and he will direct your path Okay, all my glow babies, this is your girl, Dan Style. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Be blessed in the comments if you made it this far, okay? Have a nice day. Bye.